prime time local news serving the lakeland and midwest regions hello and welcome to prime time local news my name is thomas wildman and thank you for joining us there is a heavy police presence in lloydminster neighborhood today RCMP sent a news release this morning stating the area around 57th Avenue between 36th Street and 40th Street is closed until further notice. They stated there is no immediate risk to the public but are asking people to stay away from the area. No further information is available at this time. It was a beautiful day to enjoy the brand new trails at Bud Miller Park with plenty of residents enjoying the sights and sun. And for young Avery, it was a chance to take in the wildlife. So first you put out some food for the squirrels under a tree Yep. that a squirrel has been spotted. Then you sit down patiently, very quietly. While for others it was a chance to take advantage of the clear skies. It's been really nice. You know, we've been kind of stuck inside a lot. So this is actually our first time being outside um, since we've been working. We started working at the beginning of June. So it's really nice to have a place to go that is green and sunny, finally. The lovely days may not stick around, so some are out enjoying the sun while it's out. I think it's going to be a little bit rainy for the next couple of weeks, so I thought I'd take advantage of this beautiful day. And our Abbey St. John is back at Border Paws Animal Shelter for a weekly edition of Pet Project. I'm back at Border Paws Animal Shelter for our weekly edition of Pet Project. And today we have Kita, this adorable little angel with a lot of energy and very food motivated, as you can see. So tell me a bit about her story and how she came to be and what her perfect fit would be. So Kita came to us back in October of last year as an owner surrender. Um, she came in with another dog who has since been adopted. So she's just kind of sitting here waiting for her forever home. She. Uh, has slimmed down a bit since she came to us. She was a little on the obese side. She's got a little ways to go, but again, yeah, she is very food motivated. So we do the healthy treats. She loves walks and being outside. Very energetic, happy girl. Like, she is just an absolute sweetheart. So definitely an active family, or maybe even a family that goes camping. <coughs> she'd, be, <laughs> she'd fit into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as She is very good with other dogs. Mm -hmm. She did come in with another one. We do, of course, offer meet and greets because dogs can sometimes be selective, right? She does not like cats, so she wouldn't do well in a, in a home that, are, that has cats. But yeah, family with a nice yard she can play in. If you like taking walks and exercise, she'd be a perfect walking buddy. She's all about that fitness, right? Fitness treats in your mouth. <laughs> and any kid, any age range for kids as well? I think she's great with kids as long as, um, you know, they're not just too in your face. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody teaches their kids like proper pet manners yes. with dogs and stuff. And I feel like in the right environment, she would absolutely thrive. She would be just the perfect little buddy, hey? Maybe get knocked over just a little bit when you're playing, but yeah. nothing too aggressive or anything like that. Right, yeah, she's, no, she's just a sweetheart. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> she definitely has like that lap dog energy with being a giant dog. They don't always yeah. know their size, so, but she has been showing just the sweetest personality traits since she's came in here. Very playful, very happy, <laughs> um, so that's awesome. Now this weekend, uh, you have a couple events perfect for fall. There's Day. We'll start off on the Friday, the 14th. You have a comedy show at the Sticks. Yes, so the Sticks is hosting the Man's Best Friend Comedy sh Show. Um, it is an 18 plus only event, so adults only. Show starts at 7. You can purchase your tickets either from the shelter or using a QR code. There are 30 bucks a piece or a pair for 50 with the proceeds coming back into the shelter to help feed and take care of our all of our fuzzy little friends. Kita actually has um, some food restrictions. She cannot have chicken or wheat, so special diet for her, and those foods can cost a little bit more than the regular stuff, so 
that would be greatly appreciated. All the donations yeah. voluntarily for these events. Now, on the Saturday, it's a little bit more, uh, it's a lot more family friendly, yes. um, and it's a huge event here in the Border City uh, in general. But the Just Cruising, Cruising Show and Shine Car Show is happening on the Saturday, and you will also be there as well. Yes, I will be there with a couple of fuzzy friends, maybe Kita, unless somebody wants to come and adopt her and find her a really great home. We have the, the car show, it's the 16th annual Just Cruising Car Show. Uh, we'll have a booth, a table set up. They have a show and shine. There's going to be vendors, a DJ, all kinds of fun stuff. They donated a beautiful handmade bench to us that we'll be raffling off. You can get tickets here or from us directly at the show on Saturday. And then uh, next Tuesday, we are mm -hmm. taking part in the Lloyd Comprehensive High School's Mental Health Day. So we'll be down there with a couple of animals. Just It's been shown that... Um, Animal therapy can greatly help reduce stress and around exam times, it's it's a pretty good thing. Like we didn't have that where I grew up and I feel like a lot of people would have thrived with the interaction with the animals for sure. Yes, I fully agree. I wish we had something like that when I was going through exams, especially in grade 12. I think that's the most stressful time yeah. uh, of the year for uh, seniors is definitely exam week. Uh, so that's a fantastic idea. And I know you guys went to Lakeland College as well for their exam week. We did. So it's awesome that the high school students now have an, have an opportunity to uh, cuddle with some animals as well. Um, now before we get into donations, we're going to talk a little bit about the merchandise that you guys yes. have. So um, we do have merchandise available from 1234.ca. Uh, there are hats, there are hoodies, we have tumblers, there's sweatpants, all kinds of awesome merch that you can purchase to help support the animals which is wonderful and lovely and who doesn't love some good merchandise now uh on to donations same question as every week what are the donations that you are in need of well specialty cat food like uh select protein and gastro because we do have dietary restrictions for some of our cats um some wet kitten food because we do have some mamas with some babies and because the calories are higher in the kitten food the mamas are eating that too um the rougher toys, the Kong type toys for dogs. Dog enrichment is always like, we're always looking for that kind of stuff. Awesome, yeah. well, thank you again for joining me. And Kita was a fantastic guest and now she's just roaming around, <laughs> but she definitely will make any, ha any oh. family extremely happy. She's just looking for those trees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> thank you so much. And that's all for news. Sports is next, but first, here's a look at your closing market. Today's oil prices are brought to you by First General Services. Welcome back. The Lloyd Minster Extreme are just as excited about the Oilers being in the Stanley Cup Finals as the rest of Canada and are helping out by hosting a watch party for Game 3. Today I'm joined by Graham Murray, the head coach of the Lloyd Minster Extreme Lacrosse team and he is here today to talk about their Oilers watch party as well as their upcoming golf tournament and so thank you so much for being with me today Graham. Thanks for having me. All right, Graham, so let's start with talking about this Oilers watch party. It's going to be at Rolling Greens, just some of the cool events and things that you guys are going to be having happening coming up this Thursday. Yeah, so 5.30, uh, we're going to have a watch party. Uh, Maz Entertainment was nice enough to provide us with uh, two 180-inch uh, screens for, to uh, put the games on. We'll have the sound going. It's going to be a nice steak supper. Uh, it's in conjunction with uh, Second, Chance, Second Chance Trail Ride. Uh, they're putting on the golf tournament all day. They were nice enough to let us kind of piggyback off their golf tournament to, uh, to have the watch party at night. And so you mentioned that golf tournament with Second Chance. Just um, a little bit about that and um, if people are interested, where they can go to get more information and sign up for that on, one specifically. Uh, on, on Facebook, there's, uh, there's a link to the, just, just search up the Second Chance Trail Ride. And uh, you could, there's a link there for uh, signing up for the tournament. I believe there's still spots open, just like there's spots open for the watch party as well. Excellent. And so 
for the extreme, you're going to have a lot of the players there as well. And just what are some of the funds that are going to be raised for this? What are they going to be going towards specifically for the extreme this year? Uh, it's it's a lot of it is transportation for us. Uh, you know, being in Lloydminster, a lot of our, our closest game is is Cold Lake, and as far as Sylvan Lake, uh, Red Deer, Innisfail. So uh, a lot of a lot of our our funds goes towards um, uh, transportation, equipment, floor fees, things like that. Awesome. And so for those who haven't been following the extreme, just how has the season been going for you guys so far and um, some of the upcoming games that you guys have? Uh, right now we are 9-1-1. One, and one. We lost the first game of the year, went on a little nine game here there. Uh, just had a tie this weekend, but uh, uh, we play Cold Lake on Friday night at 7.30 at the Hillmont Red and Centennial. Uh, that should be a very competitive game. They've been our rival for quite some time. And then on the Saturday, we play at 5 o'clock again in Hillmont against the team we just tied on the weekend, uh, the Sherwood Park Titans. Awesome. And then we'll just circle back to that watch party once again. If people would like to get more info and get tickets, where is the best place for them to get all that info done and possibly purchase a ticket? Uh, you can go to our, our Facebook page, uh, which is Lloyd Extreme, or you can go to Instagram, which is, again, Lloyd Extreme, or on Twitter, L Lloyd Extreme. Just search us up. Uh, or you can just text me at my phone number, 780-870-8111, and uh, we can... We, we can arrange something. Uh, we do like to have numbers by at least Tuesday morning, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Um, if we could have numbers by then, that would be great. Excellent. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for all the information today, Graham, and we definitely look forward to hopefully seeing a win for the Oilers coming up this Thursday as well as the continued success of the Lloydminster Extreme. Awesome. Thank you. Building on one of the most successful World Curling Tour events of the 2023-24 circuit, the Aztec Safety Challenge is coming back to Lloydminster in January. Our Leanne Sanders talked to one of the organizers about the event. I'm here talking today with Jeff Mulligan with the Aztec Safety Challenge. And this was a curling event that launched last year uh, for the first time. And uh, some very exciting curling happening in our city. Uh, Jeff, what can you tell me? Well, we're, we're going to do it again this year, and we're pretty excited. January 8th to 11th, uh, we'll be conducting it again at the Lloyd Curling Club. And with presenting sponsors like Wild Rose and the top curling teams in the world, we intend to have a bigger and better event. All right, so the first year obviously could have some hiccups, uh, but for the most part, uh, the event went down the way it was planned? Yeah, very much so. The, the only thing that I would note is this January 8th to 11th is now a ending on Saturday. Championship will be on Saturday rather than Sunday. We just think that's gonna make for a better event for everybody involved. All right. So last year, uh, obviously a bit of a learning curve as well, holding an event like this uh, to this degree of curling. Uh, anything that was learned in the first inaugural year? Yeah, I, I think it, it uh, certainly takes a lot of good volunteers, a lot of good sponsors. But beyond that, we found the importance of live streaming. And our live streams got about 10 million views and continue to grow. And uh, having the top teams in the world certainly helped. You were mentioning that there were certain curlers that bumped the uh, viewership up considerably during those live streams. Yeah, well, we're big corporate supporters of Team Jacobs and a big corporate partner, but when Brad Gushu's team plays, they are still uh, Canada's favorite for viewing audiences, both live and live stream. All right, now outside of the event, uh, are there anything, uh, anything planned differently from last year as far as uh, peripheral activities, that kind of thing? Well, the Junior Curling Clinic is a big hit and we'll continue that thanks to Musgraves. Uh, they'll be sponsoring that. But the, probably one of the new things this year we're proud to introduce is we're going to have a seniors day and uh, get some seniors involved. They love their curling. They know many of these curlers. Bring them into the facility for some of the early draws. Oh, that sounds excellent. Um, I guess uh, we can't count on the weather. You mentioned last year we were down in a bit of a deep freeze, but uh, how much of a damper did that put on things? Well, you know, in some respects, it kept people in the building. It kept them going to the restaurant and uh, it created more of a... Uh, more of a, a team feeling, but this year we have many of the top teams have committed. Team Kui was a champion last year. Team Jacobs will be there. Team Return as the number one team in the world heading to the Olympics this year uh, in 26. So we've got many of the top teams. And of course, Brad Gushu's team is committed for this year as well. So we're looking forward to an even bigger field, stronger field. And uh, those, are, those are the things to look forward to. The top curlers in the world are gonna be in Lloydminster once again. And Jeff, we were talking earlier about how popular this sport of curling continues to be. Um, I think some people may have uh, sort of a funny view of it, if, you know, if they haven't been part of the sport. Uh, what can you say about the event? 
Well, this year, I, I think uh, more so than many others, there's only one event, one major curling event in the West this year. The rest are all in the East. So this is going to be a big event for those fans that are dying to see some top level curling in person. But the big thing is the sport is growing. The Grand Slam of curling was sold to a new ownership group and they are really looking at ways to broaden the audience and uh, create a different kind of appeal. All right, it's still a few, uh, well, quite a few months off, uh, but how soon can people uh, start looking at tickets and things like that? We'll open the ticket sales in September and right now we're chasing down the sponsors and corporate partners. We think most of last year's committee and most of last year's sponsors are all going to return, but there's more opportunities available and we'll be opening those up right after June 21st. All right, excellent. Well, thank you for your time today, Jeff. I do appreciate it. Yeah, reach out to anybody interested. Uh, volunteers is another big area and uh, the volunteers will be opening up in that September, October timeframe when we'll start looking for volunteers. But uh, we appreciate the support of the community and we appreciate your support on this. And now we're just going to take a quick look at the upcoming three-day forecast. Tomorrow, we're going to have, it's going to be quite windy with an AM thunderstorm or two, 68% chance of rain as well for tomorrow. It's going to be down to 14 degrees for the high that day. Thursday, an 84% chance of showers throughout the day and a high of 18. And then it'll be nice and warm on Friday, though a little bit breezy and a high of 23. Thank you for watching Primetime Local News. My name is Thomas Wildman and have a great rest of your day.